This video describes the GIS term project that you are required to complete um, towards the end of the semester. And in this, I will cover what is expected in a term project and various milestones. And for this week's assignment, um, how to prepare your project outline and what are some of the options for projects that are available. So the term project is an important piece of this course. It develops the ability to independently work on an application that uses the GIS uh, tools and skills that you have learned in this class. And these include um, how to state a problem with potential GIS solution. And this hopefully through the labs and um, lessons that you have uh, taken in this course so far, you can come up with a problem that can be solved using GIS. Then the second piece is um, the ability to collect the needed data for GIS and spatial um, analysis. And so um, you have already been exposed to various um, types of data sets that are available so this is your ability to demonstrate your ability to find the right data to solve the problem. Um, then throughout the course and uh, so far and then do during the next three modules you will also learn some more GIS methods and uh, tools so um, so this outline you can as you learn more tools you can keep Im improving but this step is to help you use those tools so it's important for you to use some of those tools that you have learned in this class in solving the problem um, of the term project um, you have also been repeatedly emphasized that you have to create professional JS products so um, this would be your chance to show those skills and create professionally professional looking maps or data sets that come out of the project. Um, then an analysis of spatial data is a key component of this course. So when you have a map or data, spatial data that comes out of your project, you must be able to do a critical analysis of that product and write in your text um, various important aspects. Um, one important aspect would be how that product solves the problem at hand. Then the other aspect would be um, what is the scope of that product? How, what is the applicability? Uh, is it Would it work for that specific situation or can it be adapted for other similar scenarios. Um, and then the next step would be recognizing what are the errors in your data, the errors in your product. And these errors can come from the errors that trickled from the original data or these errors could have been introduced by the processes and tools that you use. So uh, the ability to recognize those and report those in your, in your uh, project report. And lastly, the ability to communicate your um, experience, results, um, and analysis in a written report and through an oral presentation at the end of the semester. So it's an important piece of the project, uh, of the course. Um, the two exams are each 25%, and quizzes and lab homeworks are 30% and term project itself is 20%, which is a significant component, so it needs serious attention. And within the project, there are three main components that uh, have been identified. Um, there's the outline, the written report, and the presentation. And each one um, is, um, um, the weights are given here, but overall, they contribute 5%, 10%, and 5%, respectively. To the overall grade in the class. I haven't put any due dates here because they are available in the syllabus um, and they may change depending upon um, how we proceed but 
uh, outline would be due next week. Um, and then when you write the report, um, it has to be a professionally written report. It, it is a lot of work, so I would suggest that after you submit your outline, start working on the introductory pieces of your report and start putting it together. Um, basically, in the report, what I'm, I will be looking for is the demonstration of your knowledge of GIS. Um, you don't assume that your instructor already knows um, uh, certain tools or certain concepts. It's your chance to tell me whether you know it or not. And the more you elaborate in your report, the more understanding I will get of how you are thinking and how are you applying GIS. Um, feel free to submit a draft report a week before the final report and I'll be happy to review it and give you uh, some feedback to improve it. The presentation would be the last piece of your report and it will be uh, your ability to present verbally as well as to answer any questions that I or other students may have about your project. And uh, at the basic core level, I don't expect it to exceed five minutes. Um, if you can tell me in five minutes, then probably you won't be able to tell me in 15 minutes either. Um, because if you hit these um, key points, you should you should be able to tell the message so there should be tops five slides one slide per minute the first slide should tell us what did you do and why is it important second slide should tell us how did you do it and what did you use as input so data and methods um, the next two slides which takes two minutes would be the 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 core of the your presentation it, here you will present what the output were and how did these outputs achieve the objective of your uh, project and are there any errors associated with it and at the last minute in the last minute you can wrap up by giving the conclusions any insight that you got out of this uh, project and any further recommendations you would have for somebody who may take it up next time so um, the presentations will be graded based on this rubric. Um, make sure you understand these and cover all of these aspects in your presentation. I will provide a template of presentation as well to help you. Um, how to prepare an outline, which is the first piece in this project. So um, the, I, have, I have provided this template on Web Campus, and all you have to do is fill out your name and provide all of these pieces of information. I have also provided example uh, outlines from previous classes, so previous course offerings, so it, it gives you an idea what is expected to go in these um, boxes. It is pretty self-explanatory, but you should have a title of your project. It can be a catchy title or a title that describes what you're supposed to do. Um, then a, a brief description which is basically uh, should include your uh, thesis statement and your rationale. Thesis statement is what problem will you solve and why is this problem important to be solved. Uh, the next part is GIS methods and data. So how will you do it and what will you um, uh, what will you use um, to do it. So data and GIS methods, these two boxes will cover that. Um, and lastly, what are your anticipated results? And this would be maps, plots, insights. So list, you should list the map. For example, if the output of your project is going to be a map of uh, uh, accident density in the city, then say here, you know, my output will be a map of accident density. And then insight, you can say, my map will help us better understand how the accidents are distributed um, in the city or um, how they are related to the traffic uh, density, for example. Um, from the graduate students who are enrolled in 668, I expect a little bit more, uh, which is they can link it to their um, either their thesis or dissertation or provide some more deeper understanding of their results and so ask questions like why and how and if they have if you have taken 700 um, research methods class then you may also 
bring some of that knowledge and make your project deeper than um, basic input output type of work where you produce results and uh, provide some deeper analysis of your results. And I can give you some examples through discussions. Um, here are some um, um, methods you can use to select a topic. So your topic should demonstrate an application of GIS. It, if, if you have a thesis or dissertation going on and you choose something from there, don't make it a, 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 something that is heavy on a different discipline and GIS is just touch, touched upon. For example, if you're in an environment, I don't want to see a report which is, you know, all filled with chemicals and chemical reactions. And that's that's fine. You can do that, but not at the cost of not telling me how much GIS you know or ha how have you applied GIS. That is very important part. Um, for grads, it can be something from your graduate work, but for undergrads, it can be something from... Um, uh, from other applications of GIS that you have learned through the class and class labs. Um, you can pick topics that are, are either local or they could be regional or even global importance. Here are some examples. Uh, geographical mapping of variables. You, you could say I'm going to prepare a map of uh, rainfall intensity over a certain area. You could do change analysis. How are things in um, before the turf uh, uh, before SNWA gave some incentives to remove turf and after, you know, how did the land cover change in, in our city? Um, you can do effect of one variable on the other. For example, if the temperature changes, how does that impact uh, the, uh, the uh, vegetation cover if an annual temperature is higher or lower? You can do a hydrological analysis, which could be related to precipitation, infiltration, uh, evapotranspiration, um, and, and you can also demonstrate your GIS methods that are not covered in the class um, if, if there is something that you have been doing at work, for example. Uh, some things that you should consider that this is not a, a pro project that can answer all questions about a problem. So be cautious um, you will have tops two to three weeks to work on your project so don't pick a problem that is not complete that cannot be completed in two to three weeks um, if the other thing that you have to be consider or you have to consider is that don't pick a problem for which you won't have any data available so if you pick a problem and then you come to me and say I need that data and I don't have that data this that would be uh, just a waste of time for you just hunting data for two weeks and then you will be left with only one week to actually work on the problem. So pick something for which data is readily available. There, are, uh, uh, There's a, a range of GS problems that can be solved with whatever we already have at hand. Um, here are some examples uh, that I have seen before. For example, Las Vegas Valley temperature trends. So you will download Landsat imagery, one per year, extract region of interest, wherever you're interested in looking at the time series, and then analyze how temperature has changed over last 20, 30 years. Um, similar trend for precipitation can be done. Uh, th in this case, you will prepare a map. We prepared an annual uh, a map of the U US precipitation. You can look at the trend over long term using similar kind of maps. Urban sprawl is where you will take the Landsat imagery and where you will see how a city has expanded over, over multiple years. Analyze the change. Um, then one very interesting problem that uh, I have great interest in is, uh, is how the Lake Mead area changes over uh, during the year and from year to year. And we have been going through a serious drought for several years. So it will be interesting to see how Lake Mead looks different in different Landsat images over time. And again, this data is readily available. Um, LIDAR, which data which you haven't been exposed to yet, but um, you have been exposed to DEM data. Um, but in this case, you can create a watershed um, for, the, for a small region and then under study how the, the 
flooding happens in that part, in that part of the city. So these are some of the example problems, um, but you can also demonstrate GIS methods to other examples. So we haven't covered Arc CNN and Arc Low, which is an which is an integral component of ArcGIS software that you're using. So you can do some 3D mapping using that. It'll be a little independent study on your own. Um, you can do cost surface analysis. I will provide an example of this, um, this process. You can do network analysis. You can do create KMZ files that can be taken from ArcMap onto Google Earth. Or you can uh, create methods to bring AutoCAD files into ArcMap or take ArcMap files into AutoCAD. Um, you can also look into open source uh, GIS, which is quantum GIS. Um, you can look into Python coding. So there's endless opportunities out there. Um, if you're interested in working a little bit extra, then you can uh, pick something out of what we have already covered in the class.